All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're getting this. If you're listening to this, you might want to go on YouTube to watch this to understand what we're talking about. But I wanted to talk about a very important subject in my life, Steve Slayton. And um, I don't know if it is in yours because uh, your hair is too beautiful to cover, but hats. <laughs> hats. I, I like hats. hats. Lots of hats. And I don't know why my wife says I have too many WVU hats. I don't think you can have enough. So every season I buy a new hat. And guess where I go buy it? Um, yes, the book exchange. You got it. The book exchange, everybody. The book exchange, uh, you can go there by, I mean, they have any kind of hat you want, Steve. Is is there any particular thing you're looking for? A, fed a fedora? They've got them. They've got, they've got fishing oh. hats. they got everything. Mm. I'm, you don't I'm wear hats, Steve. I'm a big fan of book of hat. Oh, I'm a big fan of book of hats. I got oh. a West Virginia book of hat. Yeah. We need to get you a new one from the book exchange. And, and when we do, we'll use the code. 25% Free code. Off. For 25% off, all you have to do is go to the book exchange, use that code, uh, go on. Uh, you can either go to the store or go online. Either way, use the code Burning Couch. Buy yourself a new hat for this season. And we are back. Another edition of the Burning Couch podcast. You probably don't know who I am, but by the end of the show, you'll know I'm a radio god, podcasting legend, and friend of animals, Matty Stout. And with me is a guy that you might have heard of. He's played, he played a little football in the college, I think, somewhere else, maybe in Toronto one time or something. Uh, no, WVU legend. Steve Slayton, how are you today, buddy? I'm great. I think we have a great show, great, beautiful guest, a wonderful voice, and a face made for TV. <laughs> 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 I call this the, uh, I, I was talking to my wife. I said, this is my favorite show to do all season. Cause I don't have to do any prep. Cause I just, I just <laughs> asked Tony, everything, Tony Caridi, our friend, uh, and, uh, the voice of the Mountaineers legend, big, big fan. I am of his Tony. How are play you? By, play by play announcer of the Mountaineers, not the voice. Have the, we ever play had, by have, play. We, have we ever had that conversation? No, I don't think so. T okay, tell me. Okay, cool. So let's do it. So um, the voice of the Mountaineers title was retired to oh. Jack Fleming in 1988, oh. uh, which is a bunch of years. That was uh, that was about almost 10 years uh, before he um, before he ended his career. And so, yeah, I've never never used it, and uh, just uh, just play by play announcer is cool. Just, just give me play by play announcer. That's fine. The play by play announcer. That's fine. We're gonna come up. We're gonna come up with a brand new one for you at some point. I'll, we'll do a. We'll do a poll. I think it should be a, a, a broadcasting a guru of the stars. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, Tony, how are you today? You're. You're. We're talking to you from your office. Yeah, we're usually talking to you from your palatial estate. Um, <laughs> how are things in the office today? Rainy. And um, I'm looking out the window right now, and I didn't even look at the weather today if it was supposed to rain or not, but it's rainy, but we're going to get rid of it because uh, game day Saturday, it's supposed to be perfect. Uh, high temperature in the low 70s and a nighttime temperature like about 47, 48. So um, it'll be perfect football weather. And uh, I was taken aback this week. I didn't realize we haven't had a true night game at the stadium that starts after 7 o'clock since 2016 can you believe wow. that yeah that's wow. amazing you know steve um obviously you played in a bunch of them here uh, but this will be the first post seven o'clock and this one actually is going to be seven like 42 seven forty four before the ball goes up in the air uh, of course for you steve you get that extra hour so and it's six forty four where you are and for maddie heck it's the afternoon uh, where you are so it's a, that's a pretty good day it means I don't have to be at, at a bar at 9 a.m. Right, uh, to exactly. watch a game with the, with the rest of the WVU alumni here in Los Angeles. Um, <clears throat> speaking of, before we get to the pick game, the game last week and, and just, just the two games that we've seen so far, Tony, um, what have you liked? What haven't you liked? Um, I know Steve and I have, have liked a few things. Uh, last week, we saw a lot of things we liked. I think a lot of I, I, these WVU fans, they drive me crazy on Twitter. We go. To, we're, we're not even through the second quarter. Season's over, everybody. Fire the coach. It's all done. We're the worst team in history. And then they come out and do really well. Yeah. So it certainly was a tale of two halves, and um, the lightning uh, delay. Obviously, one team uh, certainly took off and rolled after that, and that team, fortunately, uh, was West Virginia. Because I completely understand that things didn't feel good at all 
uh, at 14 to 10 when they stopped the game because of the lightning. Uh, my takeaway through the first two weeks is um, it's it's kind of what I had expected to this point. I came away from the Penn State game thinking that this team can have a very good season and win a lot of football games, and I truly believe that. Uh, but the the statement that I also had was they can win a lot of football games, but they have to go three and one in this current homestand and win all three of these games at home. So that includes Saturday, and then that'll include. Uh, Texas Tech next week. I think that's imperative. But if you're able to do that, and I think this team, if they play well, will be able to do that, then you've got wins that you're, you've got opportunities for wins down the road. You know, we've seen this first couple of weeks of the season, things have not gone great for Texas Tech to this point. Things have not gone well for Baylor. TCU got surprised in the opening week. Houston, you know, struggled mightily. Um, really in both of its games, and it cost them this past Saturday against Rice. And so there's other games out there that West Virginia can win and have a very good season. But I don't think um, that you can get the momentum and the role that you need unless you take care of business here first. I think that's very important. I think um, with with the way um, scoring happened last week, I think there has to be a, a load of confidence in how the defense came and shut out for the second half, that's what we need. And I think this might be this upcoming week, this rivalry game is one of the most important for not just for the team, but for the fans to rally behind yeah. because a lot of things I've seen is that, you know, we got fans, certain fans uh, down, doubting the players. You're not giving them confidence of wanting to come out there and be and perform at their best. And this is a new era of social media and, young athletes, so they need that support and love to be able to perform. But uh, I think Duquesne, that was a statement win to come out after a lightning delay. Usually you have a little rust um, during time delay, but, hey, rolling into this week, this is the most important to start where we want to be and where we should be defining this football career, football season. Yeah, yeah, and to add on to that, I think that, you know, based on how things have gone of late, um, this is an opportunity not only to get a win against an arch rival, uh, but this is an opportunity to just make everything feel better for, for yeah. all of those folks out there. Yeah. And I understand it. I mean, for all of those folks that are getting anxious and are getting concerned as to you know where the direction of the program is heading, um, this can be one of those games. I mean, this is this is the big boy game, right? This is Saturday mm-hmm. night on ABC. And you can just do some invaluable things to your brand and what people think of you, not only internally within the state and Mountaineer fans, but also externally as well, if you go out there and you play well on Saturday. So I think it's as big as as I've seen it in years and years as far as the significance of a game. Um, You know, talking about what's been working and not working, you know, the thing that I got excited about is both of our lines look great. I mean, they really do. But our secondary is still a bit suspect. Um, what other things are you saying that have made you, you might have concerns about going into this pit game? Well, uh, you know, the easy thing is that defensive backfield. I mean, if they if they don't get things um, shaped up really super quick, um, then the, the expectations that we have for this team are, are either not going to happen, or you're going to force your offense to outscore people. And my hope is that they figure out a way to at least play capable back there. Um, but it was scary, these first couple of games on some just wide open receivers. So that obviously is the concern. I know that they're making some changes personnel-wise. Some people are going to sit down and some other people are going to get an opportunity, and you hope those work. And then on the offensive end, I think we've had a couple of guys drop balls um, of receivers, and you can't let that happen either. And I think you're going to see changes there as well. You know, Hudson Clement uh, basically, you know, went out there and in the course of one night um, showed that, you know, he's got ability uh, to make Mm -hmm. plays. Now, the next thing for Hudson is that he has to do it against high-level competition. And he can do it against, you know, Duquesne. And all due respect to Duquesne, I mean, it's just a different level. I mean, it literally is FCS and FBS, right? Can he do that? and get off the line against, you know, some really elite guys. He's a football player. So it's not a question Mm -hmm. of if he's going to do it in his career. I can tell you right now, he's going to do it in his career. The question is, can we anticipate or expect him 
to do it as a redshirt freshman. That's a big step. You know that, Steve. I mean, that's yeah. a big step. Yeah. But he's a football player. I mean, this cat is a baller. He scored eight touchdowns mm. in a state championship game. You don't mm. do that. And I don't care what, what you're doing or yeah. who you're doing it against. That's stupid. Right? <laughs> that, that, yeah. Score yeah. eight touchdowns <laughs> is stupid. Yeah. And so he's got it. He's got that magic it. I don't know if you can depend on him, and, and, and it wouldn't be fair to him. But if you can get Devin Carter, if you can get Traylon Ray, who's a, a kid that didn't play this past weekend, who's a true freshman who WVU coaches think is, is going to star of the future. But if you can get that kind of a rotation where you get Hudson Clement, where you get um, you know, Devin Carter, and you get Traylon Ray, and then you throw in those, some other guys behind them, those, then you get Rodney Gallagher is going to start to get more and more snaps. Then you might have something there that is consistently solidly good. Um, you know, I think the offensive line, um, I, I never bought into the camp this off season that this offensive line was going to be elite. And I think they have a chance to be good every week. And then I mm -hmm. think some weeks they have a chance to be very good. But elite is a different angle. I mean, elite is you get people and you throw them around like rag dolls. Mm -hmm. I think they can be good and at very good. And But you know what? That's all they need to be. Just be good. Yeah. Just yeah. be good. And we got a running back room, as you can see, Steve, um, yeah. that's talented enough. You've got guys that can do the rest of it. You just can't be bad. You just can't be yeah. average as the offensive line. Just be good all the time, and that's all you need. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, um, I was very uh, proud to see Hudson. I think um, him earning the scholarships is definitely um, a step in the right direction. I, you know, I didn't know about his uh, pass in high school score, and he touched it. That's a, that's a feat in itself. That's a lot of running. That's a lot of running for sure. But um, I think for us offensively now, knowing that we have a weapon, it's not to overutilize him and just put it all in his hands to where we scheme things for him. If it's not working, come back to it, but do not try to force it. Because, you know, yeah. our running game is going to be, especially this week, uh, I've seen Pitt is talking about being physical. So we're going to have to attack them. This is going, you know, it's one of those rivalry games to where, you know, you throw the game paint out the window and just, you know, start swinging. Uh, one thing I, you know, I've <clears throat> consistently noticed about this team and, uh, and I, I, I told folks on Twitter and some of them laughing at me is the, the relationship with the quarterbacks and just how well everybody gets along. And I said, JT Daniels had a lot to do with that. Um, I feel like, you know, he really kind of in a weird way bonded the, uh, those guys well for this year. And um, what do you see the future of, 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 you know, of the two quarterbacks system? Is that going to something we're going to see, or, you know, I, I'm, I, I would prefer not, but what do you think? Or, you know, we're definitely going to see more Nico. Well, not necessarily, um, to be quite honest with you. I, yeah. I think that uh, I think Garrett, you know, won the job. And mm -hmm. at this point, it's Garrett's job until um, they think that he can't um, do as do do what they want him to do. Now, that's not to say Nico's not going to play anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But in a perfect world, uh, Garrett Green goes out there and continues to develop. Um, you know, Nico, again, the, everyone in our society today, you know, is hurry, 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 hurry. Right. And, you know, even Rodney Gallagher, after the first week, people are going like, well, where's Rodney Gallagher? Where's Rodney Gallagher? And Steve, you know, this better than anybody, man. I mean, it just takes, a, it just, just let the wine, like when they make wine, okay. When they make a bottle of wine, you don't drink it the night after they put it in no. the bottle, right? You have to wait. Yeah. Well, not in my yeah. family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes it just takes people just different times to get mature enough to go. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so, you know, Garrett Green has, has waited his turn and he's done nothing to this point to make you say, well, he can't get it done. You know, are there things that he can clean up? Absolutely. You know, we've got to make some throws. You know, at this, at this point, he's been he's made more hard throws than he has some of the easier the throws, easy ones, yeah, right? Sure. And so, like, yeah. you know, we had that sideline ball on the West Virginia sideline to Cole Taylor the other day that he overshot, and then we had a couple, you know, that came in a little bit low. So when so he's it's all there. So if he can clean those up and make the quote unquote easy play, he's throwing an unbelievable deep ball right now. I mean, he, you guys saw the game Saturday. I mean, yeah. he is dropping those in into hands. Mm -hmm. So you take that 
if he can just get those easier ones settled down because he plays with so much emotion that sometimes he just gets too geeked. Once he does that, he becomes a real problem for opposing defenses because if he can make throws, now mm-hmm. you got him, right? He yeah. can say, you better cover that guy. Oh, you're going to cover that guy. The box is lighter. I'll see you later. I'm going. So yeah. that's the plan. Same deal with, with Nico. You know, Nico has the ability to stroke the ball downfield, but it's the one position where you only can play one at a time. And so one ball on the field. <laughs> exactly. So you just got to hold your water. You got to be patient. It's like the running backs, right, Steve? I mean, you only yeah. can use one normally. You're only using one running back. It's just like just chill, hang tight. It's easier said than done, but you're going to get an opportunity. Invariably, everyone gets their opportunity. You just don't know when it's going to be, when it is come, when it does come, then you got to grab it and go. Yeah, I think the one thing that people don't understand is when live bullets are flying, you you got to gel, and it's it's all three phases. It's offensive, it's offense, defense, special teams, and this is only the second game of the year. Now we're going to a third game of the year to where this um, magnitude is 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 tough to to get into when you're not getting a chance to gel. But I think, um, like you said, with Garrett Green getting time to really now be the guy, not looking over his shoulder or just coming in to fill in. That's you know it's a, it's a different spot to come into yeah. where hey you're just fed to the wolves because we need we need something different. So I think with this game or him being on the team last year, seeing what the magnitude is, seeing hey understand. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're doing a lot of film study of throws he can make, and that's got to build him a lot of confidence to where hey I missed a five yard throw, but I could make the deep ball. That's uh, just repetition. That's going over film study. That's just going out on the practice field and doing those reps from jam street media